Today we're throwing it back here at Power Republic to the good old Yamaha racing days and we're going to be doing the Walbro carburetor service. Welcome back to the Power Republic YouTube channel. Today we're going to be showing you how to pull apart and service your Walbro carburetor. Now, the Walbro carburetor dates back probably to the 70s I suppose. Um, when it first came out on the Yamaha S and J engines back in the day, it's still a great carburetor for those engines. And we got a question from our Patreon subscriber, Nicholas, and he was asking about the Walbro, so we're doing the video for him. So this is the 25mm Walbro carburetor. Now, we've got two sides to the carby. This side is your pump side. Uh, this is your fuel inlet, and this is the pulse line from the crankcase. And then on the over... Over the other side, we have the metering side of the carburetor. And this is where you have your diaphragm, and it meters the fuel down through the circuitry, through the jets, and into the Venturi. And they have a discharge here at the Venturi for the high-speed circuit. And then you have the discharge here for your idle, and your transition circuit is down halfway between the idle circuit and the Venturi. Now, Nicholas's question was to do with the blow-off pressure. So we're going to check the blow-off pressure first. And then we're going to show you how to pull the carby totally apart and then reassemble it. To check the blow pressure, we're going to remove the cover here and the diaphragm. First up, you want to remove the four screws here on the diaphragm cover. If you've got an electric screwdriver, now's the time to use it. And then you can just peel off the diaphragm cover carefully. So you can see here the diaphragm has a small spigot and the spigot goes down here underneath this uh, fork in the lever arm and then as the fuel goes down the diaphragm pulls on the the lever and opens the needle which lets the fuel flow back into this area. Now underneath here I'm about to pull that off as well uh, and you can see the circuitry of where the fuel flows for your low and high speed jet. Next up grab, grab yourself a flat blade screwdriver and let's remove this cover. Underneath this cover is a small check valve. Uh, the fuel actually flows over this area and down through this hole here and that's for your high speed jet circuit. So you can see here this little check valve, a little flap here. As the pressure changes in the carburetor, it'll either open or close the the fuel inlet here and that's all here for this. Um, this is your high speed discharge area so the fuel comes from the bowl down into here and then you can meter the high speed fuel just by turning your needle jet or your high speed needle jet from sort of closed all the way to about a, a half of, of one turn open and that seems to be the sweet spot for the J engines running the wall brake carburetor. As always as you are disassembling something and you're not sure of how it goes back together just lay the parts out in order as they come apart. This one here being brand new it's just a little bit stuck together so you just want to lay them out like so so that you pick them up back in the same order when you put it back together. Now we're ready to check the blow off pressure. To check the blow off pressure you're going to need yourself a little um, blow off pressure gauge. This one's 0 to 15 psi but you get them from 0 to 30 as well and as you can see if I block off the fuel hose you just hold the pressure and then you've got a little pressure relief valve here. So this is the fuel metering side. The fuel comes up through this uh, this little needle here. It's called the needle in the seat. And it flows into this area and goes down here. And this is your low speed circuit. And you meter that by turning your little screw here. And then the fuel flows down and feeds to your transition jet and also the idle jet when the butterfly is shut. Start by putting your piece of fuel line onto the fuel inlet barb. Now this is just that little brass barb here, the piece of fuel line connected to your blow off gauge and then and then you can just check the blow off pressure by pumping it up slowly. Oh. And this one's set from the factory at 13 psi. Now that traditionally is way too high and you can see it holds around 10 psi. So we're going to adjust that back to something way more racy, which will be 
pop off at 10 and hold about eight pounds of pressure. So before we just adjust the pressure, I just wanna show you how to adjust the lever height. Okay, so we're checking this one out with our lever height gauge and it's about 1.4 millimeters. Now to adjust the lever the easy way, slide a flat blade screwdriver just under the lever and just slowly bend it up ever so slightly, double checking as you go with your lever height gauge tool. And then we're back to 1.2, then just a tiny little bit more of a bendola. Now if you do go too far, perfect, 1.0. If you do go too far, you've just got to pull the lever out and bend it back down manually. Or you can carefully put your screwdrivers like this and bend it back down the other way. Holding the uh, little screwdriver here on the back tabs and then using your big screwdriver on the front just to sl slightly bend this aluminium lever. So now to get the little spring out here to adjust the lever pressure, we're going to remove this screw here, put it to one side, and then the little lever and pin assembly come apart, put them to one side, grab your little spring, pair of sharp side cutters, and we're just going to cut off Boom, like that. So you can see here we've cut off about three coils from this end. So to put it all back together, we're just gonna put the spring in its little house here. So we're gonna balance the needle inside the lever there and then just slowly come down. Now we can push that guy into the carburetor. Insert the little retaining screw. and Just gently do that up. You wanna be careful you don't cross thread it. Okay, and then we can, what we can do now that we've done that up is we can recheck our lever height and then recheck our blow-off pressure. So you want to recheck your lever height at one millimeter there. So now we're ready to recheck our blow-off pressure. And it's 10 and a half and nine. If you really pump it, it goes quick, but just a general pressure. And also too, if it's leaking a little bit, this is a brand new carburetor, you can just get yourself a tiny little bit of oil Dribble that on there. This is just two stroke oil. And then press the lever down gently. Just like that to get the oil down in underneath the needle in the seat. And it should seal just a little bit better and give a little pop sound. Hence the term pop off gauge. So you can see that that's just blowing off at about nine and a half pounds and holding eight and a half. Perfect straight out of the box. So now that we've adjusted the lever height and the blower pressure, now granted this carburetor is brand new so I don't actually have to replace any of the parts, I'm just gonna show you how to pull apart this side and change the diaphragm gaskets, then we're gonna put it all back together and that's a wrap. So remove the screws holding the, the manifold plate down with your screwdriver or your power screwdriver. Lay the parts out in order as they come off so that you can put them back together in the reverse order. So as you can see, this is the other side of the carburetor here and this is the pump side. What happens is the fuel comes in through here, comes up through the uh, manifold. We've got a couple of check valves. Um, that changes the, uh, the, they stop the fuel from going back out as the carburetor pumps. And it just pumps the fuel through this circuit up and over here and then the fuel sits in this little bowl um, and then on the other side of this gauze is the back side of the, the needle that we, will look, that we were working with on the other side of the carburetor. So the fuel comes in here, comes around, down, goes through the carburetor, through this side, underneath the needle in the seat and then through your metering needles and down through the discharge jets, these two being the idles transition and lastly the venturi that you can't see. Okay so now we've disassembled the carburetor you might want to clean it all out with some brake cleaner and some compressed air. This little gauze filter fills up sometimes with some lint and dirt and debris that comes through the um, fuel filter and when you're mixing up your fuel there's always sometimes some contamination so it's a good idea to clean that out. Some guys don't even run it you can delete it pretty easily by just picking it out with a pick and throwing it away. So now let's get back to the reason. So now if you've got new gaskets, lay them out over the top of your old ones so that you can just work backwards. First on goes this little guy, 
Now it has got some location holes so you can't put it in backwards. This one here goes next. Okay, and then you lastly the, the plate. Now the plate will line up all the gaskets for you, don't force it on. Just jiggle them around until the little dowel pins that are on the plate line up with the, the dowel holes here on the body of the carburetor. And then you can add your screws. One, two, three, four. and do them back up. So now we can work through the other side of the carbon. First off goes this little guy and just work backwards from how you laid the parts out before. It's a little check valve for the high speed circuit. Put your little screws in and then just do them up with your flat blade screwdriver. First up, put your spacer gasket on. It's got a couple of dowel pins there. And then you're going to put your diaphragm on. And the trick for this one is you want to put the little spigot here down inside the, inside the lever. And then just sit him on nice and flat like that. So now if you need to just double check, you can lift up the corner of the, the diaphragm here and just see that you make sure that little spigot's down in the lever. And then, last but not least, you can put the cover back on. Now this is a brand new carburetor with this little roll pin. Now to get that out to the nice, easy racing position, use your multi-grips there and just push it through. Okay, so now we're in the little closed position. Now these carburetors work best from there all the way around to a half a turn open. That's pretty rich and sort of back to a um, one third on the high. And here on the low speed jet, this one's closed off. If you screw that open half to one turn on the low and you run the jet between here and here on the high, you should have no problems at all running this uh, carburetor on your Yamaha J. I'd also like to Take this time to mention our friends in Mackay that are having the Enduro race in, on the 27th of July. They're racing Yamaha J engines and they're using the Warbro carburetor. So for you guys, that's how you service your Warbro carburetor before the event. This one here will be getting the blueprint treatment from your friends at Power Republic. It's the SM2 race carburetor. It works exceptionally well on the J engine. If you want to get one of those, let us know in the comment section below. Email, Facebook, Instagram. All the usual suspects. So there you have it, that's the Warbro carburetor service and adjustment. If you like these videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on the notifications. It really means a lot to us. If you have any questions, please leave that in the comment sections below. Also a shout out to all our Patreon subscribers. If you want to follow along on Instagram and Facebook, you can do that too at Power Republic, or you can go to our website www.powerrepublic.com.au, grab yourself a t-shirt or a Warbro carburetor. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.